context, the purpose, the meaning. When we have the evolutionary worldview framework, there's not much purpose, there's not much meaning behind our existence because basically we are just a higher life form which will ultimately die and just be a bit of compost. When you're dead, you're dead. And so the futility of life is, brings a sense of, of meaningless to this worldview of evolution. But here's the question. Who may ascend the hill of the world? Because no matter who you are, whether you don't believe in God or you're a deeply spiritual person, there is something inside that cries out for something beyond uh, ourselves. Augustine, in his Confessions, wrote, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. We've been singing about it in these songs. It's absolutely true. My heart was restless for how old am I now? Throughout, since I was at the age, the age of 30, my heart was restless. I was searching for significance. I was looking for acceptance. I was wanting to be loved. And I was searching for something outside of myself. Something or someone greater and bigger who could take control of my life and bring peace and love and healing and newness. And this is the question, who may ascend the hill of the Lord because we cannot? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive a blessing from the Lord. Search all over for the spiritual. We were listening to Radio Lester on the way in, and it's the Dulcie Dixon, and she's got she had a, an imam on, she had a, a seat chap in, she had a Seventh Day Adventist, didn't have a Christian sadly, and they were all saying what it, it means for them. How do we get right with God? And basically, it was all through work. <laughs> the Seventh Day Adventist said you have to be baptized. <coughs> Which of course the dying thief could never be baptized. <coughs> but spirituality is in the heart of human beings, no matter where you go. With sacrifice, rituals, works, incantations, meditations, initiations, all seeking and searching for the divine for becoming before God and approaching a God. And this is the question here. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? <coughs> who may stand in his holy place? Who can? He who has clean hands, says David. Our hands clean. What the psalmist is thinking about here is our actions. The things that we do with our hands. What have your hands done? What have my hands done? And then he says those with a pure heart. And here think about the thoughts, the thoughts that we have. Who does not lift up his soul to an idol? Who of us has not placed anything else before God? We have put God first in our hearts and lives throughout our existence. And swear by what is false, that we speak truth into people's lives. Who has done that? My hands are dirty. And yours are too. My thoughts are sinful. And yours are too. My soul has bound down to the 21st century idols. And yours have too. These lips have lied. And at some point yours have too. Not even Gandhi or Mother Teresa, these people who are put on plinths, have ever 
lived such a life. There is only one who has ever been and ever will be who will be able to ascend that holy hill and stand in that holy place and that is King Jesus. He will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from God our Saviour. You see? It's the one who has received the blessing from the Lord and the vindication from God, his Saviour. <coughs> That's how we ascend that hill. That's how we stand in that holy place. It is all because of King Jesus. It's when we see our sin, when we are confessed our sin and our need for him, the sin which is destroying our life, the sin which wants to take us to the grave and to death and to eternal separation from God. That's what sin wants to do to us tonight. Sin wants to take us to the pit and keep us there. Christ wants to lift us up upon him take us to a hill and stand us in a holy place. It's only the righteousness of Christ imputed to us whereby we as sinners are made right before God. The righteousness of Christ is perfect life and is atoning sacrifice. His righteousness is imputed to us and our sin is given over to him as he bore it in his body upon the tree and his blood that is shed cleanses us from all sin. If we're going to ascend that holy place, up that hill and stand in that holy place, we must first ascend to Calvary. We must go up another hill. And we must see Jesus. And we must bow before that cross and see him lifted up there, bearing our sin in his body, demonstrating his depth of love. It's at the cross where we come to find our acceptance. It's at the cross where the blood and love flows and it mingles down. And it cleanses us. It heals us, it restores us, it forgives us. It makes us new. We must ascend to Calvary to stand in that holy place. We must look to him. It's only through Jesus can we be righteous before God and declared holy. It's only as we are washed by the Spirit of God can we be stand before the bar of God completely justified? Just as if we have never sinned. Through the righteousness of Christ. Such is the generation that seek him, says David. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O oh God. Do you seek him? If you're not seeking him, that's part of your problem. That you're not seeking him. It's those that seek him that receive the vindication from God, his Saviour. Do you seek him tonight? This is where our search for acceptance ends. This is where we are enveloped in the love of God. This is where we are restored and made into the likeness of Christ. This is where His Spirit fills us and keeps us and indwells us. This is where we find true happiness in the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Saviour. This is where we find the acceptance. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Got one more thought, and we'll just leave it. I think we'll sing some more songs. But he's mighty to say, that's King Jesus. And that's how we can ascend the holy hill. Do you know? Yes, we have sinned. 
But when God looks upon us, we are righteous. We are clothed in his righteousness. We have clean hands. We have a pure heart. We have, what was it, what you was? Well, we have all those things. They're not our own. We can enter and enter into the Holy Place because of King Jesus. And he is God, he is our Saviour, and he is mighty to save. Thank you.